This past week marked the one year mark for Warzone, 365 days of gameplay. And I know this year was a long one, but honestly, it still kind of feels like it went by like a blur. But in this past year, we saw a handful of changes, new additions, some big events, but that was the past. What's in the future? Today, I wanna to try and discuss here with you guys a little bit of what we can expect for year two of Warzone and what is on deck for perhaps the next 365 days of content as well. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you hope to see out of year two within Warzone? Are you hoping to see a new map? Are you hoping to see more frequent communication and updates, new weaponry, whatever it is, feel free to let me know. As well, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related. We're on the road to 400,000 subscribers and we'll keep the day with all of it. So if you're interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. But said, let's jump into the discussion at hand of year two. First, let's start out with the immediate future. The current rumor is that we're leading up to a new map via an in-game event or events and the transition with season two into season three. So right now, that time to look at is April 22nd and leading up to that, well, that's season three's launch and right now the marketing and build-up looks to be hyping up some major change. We've talked about this a million times, so I don't want to beat a dead horse here at this one, but the zombies outbreak looks to spread. Those missiles that are now exposed in the silos are nuclear. We've had data mined audio quotes relating to an event, so that event looks to nuke Verdansk and then replace it with a new map more thematically likened to the Black Ops universe. Yesterday, the update actually happened to further that narrative a little bit further. The zombies shifted from shipwreck to prison, but accompanying that was a blog talking about the outbreak written from the perspective of Armistice Central Command, the combined forces in the storyline for Modern Warfare that took on Zakayev and Verdansk. So that said, and I quote, containment protocol level has not been raised as these threats appear to be mainly contained to the southern zone of Sector 5 and operators in surrounding regions should proceed as normal. Computer models expect the anomalous activities to cease shortly and a conflagration is not expected. In layman's terms, there's nothing to worry about. This outbreak is contained and everything is going to be normal. But if you look at the header image associated with that blog post, well, there's actually Morse code underneath the 5% detailed, which if you take that and translate the Morse code, it says conflagration definitely expected. For clarity, conflagration is described as an extensive fire which destroys a great deal of land or property, a firestorm essentially, meaning that when mentioned in this blog post yesterday, we kind of talked about how it was basically every zombie outbreak cliche. The government or body in charge denies anything is wrong, but someone on the inside knows the truth and then boom, it's put out there in a code for contradiction like we saw with that. So this event is being put into motion here. That looks to be kicking off year two, a rather long-winded buildup though, if I will be honest with you, for what likely is going to be another live event here at the end of the season, something similar in nature perhaps to the Know Your History event. Likely not a real-time nuke going off into Verdansk that you can watch, but instead something that prompts you to go to an area then plays a cutscene or trailer cinematic like we saw with the Know Your History event. But that then leads up to the new addition here that is rumored as the first big addition with year two. That new map that is likely going to be coming again the start of season three, that's the current rumors that gives that the time frame of April 22nd, so a little over a month away. Now, if the recent VGC article is anything to go off of, this is entirely replacing Verdansk, not something where it's being added in addition to Verdansk, but instead completely taking Verdansk out of the rotation of play and you won't be able to play on it anymore. Right now, that current rumor is the map that we're going to be getting is made up of all the fire team maps as Warzone's Verdansk was made up of the ground war maps in Modern Warfare. Of the rumored map, we could see locations like Golova, Duga, Mines, Battle, Battery, Ruka, Chemical Labs, Zoo, Sanatorium, Weather Station, and Ski Slopes, but that is something that again is right now just rumored, though all signs do look to be pointing towards that. One big thing also that is likely is that we're not going to see a transition to the Cold War engine. I do not see that happening, and I'm pretty sure that's actually even been confirmed by Activision reps. I can't remember off the top of my head where that was, but I know that I saw that, so I wouldn't expect that to be something as colorful as Fireteam in Black Ops Cold War, but instead taking that map and putting it on the Modern Warfare engine. So that'll be something to look out for. In terms of other things coming within year two, of course, we'll have those new content additions like seasonal map updates and weapon additions. The upcoming season, if season three follows how exactly we think it will, of course, that won't be a seasonal map change, but instead a new map altogether. But after that, season four, five, and six and all will be put into the next year with likely changes how we saw with Verdansk this past year. Open 
opening up various areas, maybe adding in new points of interest and things like that. Easter egg additions as well for new blueprint unlocks for specific quest lines you need to do. That kind of stuff is seemingly standard now within Warzone and how we saw that evolve over the past year. And I'm incredibly looking forward to that as time progresses. Of course, we also may very well in year two see a lot more events, both smaller in seasonal scale and also larger in live reveal events. Seasonal events, that's stuff that we kind of saw here as of the recent trend with more seasons introducing things like the Haunting of Verdansk, the Outbreak event, where there's seasonal events to either start or have in the mid-season that are kind of common occurrences now, offering up challenges in exchange for rare blueprints on a timed level. That seems to be somewhat standard now with new seasonal changeovers, or at least relatively standard. But outside of that, of course, we will likely see, given how big of a reveal it was and how much hype it generated, not only for the reveal itself, but also for Warzone revealing it, a sort of reveal event for the next Call of Duty. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War's Know Your History event was something that was talked about for months upon leading up to it, and then also was massive in terms of its reveal scale, while also on a biz dev side, they didn't have to go anywhere for external marketing. They just generated all the hype and the reveal in their own game, saving them likely millions of dollars in marketing. So for them to not do that again would kind of be crazy. So while it's not confirmed, it would not surprise me if we end up seeing a Call of Duty 2021 reveal event. Also, I would expect it to be on a similar time frame, like the Know Your History event, somewhere around maybe August likely. So a later reveal like we saw with this past Past year, but that would then give life to all facets of Call of Duty around the year. A new map in April, time to spend for players on that to experience it for a few months and any subsequent adjustments that are made seasonally. A new reveal event for the next Call of Duty a couple of months later. A new game launched for that traditional campaign MP and third co-op mode with a month or two to play around that before integration. And then a new integration happening around November or December is my guess again for COD 2021 weapons to be introduced into Warzone. And then we see the cycle repeat for the end of year two into year three. Again, that then leads into the new weapons integration with a new Call of Duty. Warzone doesn't look to be going away anytime soon, even if it is something where people think that it died off relatively quick. However you feel about it, the investment here is definitely into Warzone long term. So even if it's something that over the course of the next year continues to dramatically fall off in player numbers, which I don't know if it will happen or not, even if it does, Warzone is at least going to have this COD 2021 the way that I see it integrated into it coming then full circle into Infinity Ward's next title, perhaps in 2022. So that's something that is definitely long term. So they're going to be introducing these weapons into Warzone after the launch of COD 2021. So you can bet on that one. But that's the things that we kind of expect here, the things that we kind of know will happen just based off of this past year and the sort of baseline and standard that it's set for Warzone going forward. A lot of what we can see here is a nice foundation for specific pillars of Warzone to be built upon. So I would expect all of these to happen, but more so for my own personal hopes, what I expect to happen I'd love to see more frequent adjustments here to this. We talked about it a little bit a couple of days ago with the one year in review video. More than one map adjustment or more than one thing happening in Warzone once every two months. That's something that it just, that pacing was way too slow for me, man. We have something that has put Call of Duty back on the mainstream map in terms of player counts. You want to make sure you capitalize on that. You want to make sure that players are excited for what's coming next instead of having seven weeks of downtime after that first week of opening up a bunker or something like that. That kind of stuff is cool initially, but it doesn't retain players long term. So hopefully we end up seeing more frequent adjustments and more frequent updates for Warzone across the next year here at this. Another one is anti-cheat. For the love of God, please invest into an anti-cheat that gets rid of cheaters automatically and on a much more frequent basis. Yes, there have been more frequent ban waves, which has helped. I haven't seen as many cheaters or blatant cheaters as of lately, and maybe I got lucky, but it was definitely a massive issue within the last couple of months here and will still be if nothing is done about it. And finally, I just hope for better communication. That's one thing that I think is, of course, tough in game development because when there is such big money behind it, when there is so many people affected by it, having an answer given right away may not be the most accurate answer or may be caught up in red tape. So I get that some things cannot be communicated immediately, but I do just hope to see communication continue on and get better as the next year goes on. But that said, that's year two in a nutshell here for Warzone. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below.
below. What do you guys hope to see out of Warzone Year 2? Are you looking forward to anything in particular? Maybe a new map here that may be coming up with Season 3? Are you hoping for any new weapons? Are you hoping for a different integration system? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related. We'll keep it the day with all of it. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button to join the community. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get kicked outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check my conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, be. That link is down there in the description below. But said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.